Today we're going to talk about fossil succession and how the occurrence of fossils in different uh, regions of the rock record helps us to age the actual rocks. So um, let's just kind of read along here. We're going to work on this together and then there's going to be a quiz afterwards that you can go ahead and take. So it says here groups of fossil organisms occur throughout the geological record for specific intervals of time. This time interval is what's called the fossils range. Knowing the range of the fossils of specific organisms or groups of organisms can be used to relatively date rocks and sequences of rocks. In this exercise, we're gonna use such information to assign a date to a hypothetical unit of rock. So this is relative dating uh, in the same way that we learned how to relative date by going the layer on the bottom is older than the layer on top, right? If a layer cuts through another layer, it's younger than the layer it cuts through. It's, it's all falls along those same principles, but this time, we're going to use the occurrence of fossils in the fact that certain fossils, well, well, all life on this planet, has a certain time length that it lives before it undergoes extinction or evolutionary change and looks different. And so we can determine those things when we look through the fossil record. So, uh, it says here a section of rock made up of layers of limestone and shale has been studied and samples have been taken. A large variety of fossils were collected from the rock samples. Make a bar graph using the information shown in the data table. Begin by listing the numbers of the individual fossils on the x-axis. Use the geological time scale in the data bank to list the time units of the geological time scale on the y-axis. Okay, let's start setting that up here. So you're going to want this page here. There it is, okay. And we're going to just kind of make ourselves a little key here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna darken this line in here. So we're gonna label these axes. So going across, um, going from here up, we're gonna put the time periods that we're looking at. Okay, so we need to know all the time periods those are all listed right here. Okay. That's a little bit hard to see. It's a little dark on my paper. The online one will have a color picture. Uh, starting here with the Precambrian, we go through the Cambrian, the Ordovician, the Silurian, the Devonian. Uh, we're going to split the Carboniferous up into the Mississippian, the Pennsylvanian, the Permian, the Triassic, the Jurassic, the Cretaceous, uh, the Tertiary, and then finally the Quaternary which is the recent time is up here, ancient time is down here. Now we're gonna go ahead and leave off the Precambrian because we're not gonna have any fossils that go down to the Precambrian, I don't think. Um, <laughs> shouldn't, there's really was not much fossilizable during the Precambrian except the earliest moments. So yeah, see if we look at our data table here, we don't have Precambrian anywhere on there. So let's list these out. I'm getting these right off of here, reading from the bottom up, starting with the Cambrian, and ending up here in the quaternary. So let's go ahead and put those on our data table. So we're gonna start down here with the Cambrian. Then the Ordovician. Silurian. Devonian. An e. Mississippian, you gotta write small to fit that one in there, Pennsylvanian, Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Tertiary, and Quaternary. Okay, there's all the periods listed out. 
in. Like I said, we broke the Carboniferous up into the Pennsylvania and Mississippi in because that's how they did it. So, um, what what we're looking at here when you when you see these things, there's actually little descriptions over here that tell you what happened or what was going on during those time periods. So just to kind of orient ourselves here a little bit. Um, life really takes off in the Cambrian. That's like really when the boom is. And we in fact refer to the beginning of the Cambrian as the Cambrian explosion. Life just goes wild, all kinds of stuff in the oceans. And life is in the oceans for quite some time, okay? Uh, then we start to see things really kind of coming about on land, like in large, larger numbers during the Silurian and the Devonian. We see insects. Um, <clears throat> During the Mississippi and the Pennsylvania, we get a lot of coal deposits. Uh, there's still a lot of marine fossils. There's stuff on land. Um, as we continue on up here into the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, this whole chunk is known as the Mesozoic. This is the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs come about here in the Triassic, and they go extinct in the end of the Cretaceous. And after that, it becomes what we call the age of the mammals. So mammals like us take over, but humans don't come about until the very, very, very end of the Quaternary, like way up here at the very end. You can see we're really even in the wrong place. So you'll, you'll want that information for when we answer some of the questions in the lab. Okay, back to our table here. <clears throat> the thing we're supposed to put across the x-axis is the number of, uh, is, uh, what are we supposed to put across the x-axis? We can look back at that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the numbers of the individual fossils uh, on the x-axis. Okay, so they're numbered on the front of the paper, so rather than writing, rather than writing each of the name of the fossil in, we're just going to use numbers to represent them, and there's nine different fossils. So we'll have to keep referring back to this to see which fossil we happen to be talking about, okay? Let's look back at that there. So we're just gonna go ahead and number this, this thing here. And we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those refer to the actual fossils down here. And over here are the time periods. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to mark in how many of each kind or, or what periods of time each fossil survived through. When did they first evolve? And when did they go extinct? So we'll start here with the foraminiferans. Okay, that's number one. And they start about in the in the Silurian, and then they, they end in the Quaternary. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here, this is super complex stuff, since fossil number one, the foraminiferans, start in the Silurian, we're gonna color in the Silurian, and they end in the Quaternary, Color that one in. This whole block of time, right? They don't go extinct and come back. They survive through this entire length of time right here. Okay? They start here is where they first evolve and they go extinct. Um, well, actually, they're still alive today, so they don't go extinct. So they're still around. They've been around for a long time, these four AMs. Number two is the Bryozoans. Bryozoans start in the Devonian, oops, sorry, start in the Silurian and go. Uh, up through the Permian, okay? Okay, so they're gonna start here in the Silurian just like the last fossils did. This is fossil number two. And we said they go up through the Permian. There's the Permians right here. So I color that in. See how this goes? Now that you've got the hang of it, you can go through and fill the rest of these out pretty quick and easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and look off my paper here and fill them in as I go. Through the Pennsylvanian, the Mississippian, down through the Silurian, okay, number five, starts in the Silurian again, we're going to go up through the Permian. Starts in the Ordovician a little bit earlier and goes up through the Devonian. Awesome. Number seven. 
number seven. Starts there in the Silurian, goes right on up through the Devonian. Number eight, starts in the Devonian. And we go all the way up to the Tertiary before extinction. And this last one, it ends in the Devonian but it starts way down here in the Cambrian. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got a, nice, got a nice graph representing uh, the fossils that we're talking about. And let's see what the next step is here. Examine the graph. Are there any time units that contain all of the fossils listed? Write that at the bottom of the graph. Well, let's, rather than write it down, let's just take a look here. Let's look across here. So, looking at all these, all the different fossils, there is, there is one time period that include that could include every single fossil, isn't there? Notice the Devonian here. The Devonian, if we were to have found every single one of these fossils in a layer of rock, we would have to be assume that the age of the rock was Devonian in age, okay? Uh, which is kind of interesting that it comes out to this because all of the rock, most of the rock we find out here uh, around our part of Indiana is actually Devonian and Silurian rock. It's quite old. So Devonian, uh, would be the age of, if we had found all these fossils, we would mark the age of this rock as Devonian. Okay. Um, oh, that's the next question, isn't it? So we just, we just answered it here. The age that they were collected from was the Devonian. And that's because that's the only time, only time period you could have found all those fossils in. You get it? If you find them all in the same rock, had to be Devonian in age. You're going to do this on another assignment, so make sure you understand like how I did this and how I figured out what age of the rock was. It is actually very simple, as long as you don't confuse yourself. Okay, based on the age determined, do you think that this group of fossils could be considered index fossils? Why or why not? Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's discuss what an index fossil is here, first of all. Okay, so an index fossil uh, has to uh, exist in only a very short, from a very, for a very short period of time, okay, um, and be easily recognizable. Now, disregarding whether or not we can, these are easily recognizable or not, are there any of these fossils, any individual fossil, that exists only for say one period of time before it goes extinct like it evolves in the devonian and it goes extinct in the devonian uh, th that's not the case here so any one of these individual fossils um wouldn't really wouldn't really get me right like even if we looked at say what is that one um number number seven here which is the shortest amount Number seven is the trilobites. Let's let me write that down there for you. The trilobite. The trilobite fossils were number seven, and even they only exist for two periods of they exist for two periods of time. They they don't exist for a short enough amount of time. Now many trilobites really are index fossils, but in our example here, they, they live for too much time. If we had just found that trilobite, we wouldn't be sure if it was Silurian or Devonian. We really wouldn't know. So I'm gonna write no here. Okay, and even trilobites, which live from the Silurian through the Silurian to the Devonian,
So looking at that there, okay, from the Silurian through the Devonian, right? That's, that's 89 million years. I think that's right. Let me see here. Oops, sorry, 98. <laughs> it's 98, that's 98 million years that they lived. That's, that's a long time, right? That's a very long time. Uh, it doesn't help us narrow it down too much since they lived through 89 million years of Earth's history. It'd be much more useful as, a, as an index fossil if they had only lived, say, a million years or two million years. But 98 million years, that's just, that's way too long to be a really good index fossil. I mean, it helps, but it's still not great. Okay, here's another question. A species of trilobite listed on line, in line seven, there we go, the data table, uh, Phacopicus logani is limited to rocks of lower Devonian age. Okay, now they're telling us it's lower Devonian age. Uh, Trilobite fossils are widespread throughout North America. Can this fossil be considered an index fossil? So let's say, let's say here that this fossil is really limited to just one particular species that we're talking about this. This P. Logani species happens to be just this little section right here, okay? that's gonna make it tremendously useful as an index fossil. Why? Because it lived a very short amount of time and it can be found all over the place. Okay. So I'm gonna put here, yes. Yes, it's widespread. Maybe, maybe only lived, say, like 15 million years, right? If it only lived like 15 million years, that makes it a pretty good index fossil right there, right? So it's very, very short-lived. Okay. These fossils were collected from limestone and shale rocks. Based on what you've learned about the formation of these rock types, what type of environment did these organisms live in? Well, limestone forms in sh calm, shallow ocean waters, okay? Shale also can form in ocean waters. So basically what I'm looking at here, more than likely, these are shallow oceans. In fact, if you look at, if you actually look at the names of the fossils here, if you know what any of these things are, you'll know they all live in the ocean. Bivalves, like clam looking things, like gastropods, right? Like snails. Trilobites aren't around anymore. Uh, brachiopods, like ocean living shelled things. These are all ocean creatures. Shale often contains fossils of leaves. If the gastropods listed in line three and line six were collected from shale containing leaf fossils, let's see here, gastropods from line three, line three, and line six, I think they said, yep. So yeah, line three was a gastropod and line six was a different type of gastropod. So these are different species of gastropods here. They didn't tell us what they were. Maybe that would have been more helpful. Okay. Were collected from shale containing leaf fossils. You could use your, use, you could, you, could you use radiocarbon dating to assign a numerical date to this rock unit? Now we're gonna talk more about um, radiocarbon dating and Yes, if there is carbon present in, in a fossil, we could potentially carbon date it. Like a leaf fossil containing carbon um, that's preserved in the shale. Yeah, you could, you could carbon date something like that. But there's a problem here. Okay, let's look at, okay, from three and six here. Okay, if we were to use either of those, and let's look at the time periods they lived from. Six goes extinct 
at the Devonian, okay? Three goes extinct up here at the end of the Pennsylvanian. Well, the pencil, oops, you can't see that, sorry. The Pennsylvanian is the most recent thing, and then six was the Devonian right here is where it, it kicks it, okay? Could we date that with carbon dating? Well, let's see how old the end of the Pennsylvanian is. Where's my data sheet here? There we go. Here's the Pennsylvanian. The Pennsylvanian period ends 290 million years ago, okay? The Devonian, which I think was number, what, six is, Devonian ends in six. Devonian ends at 354 million years ago. So just taking this 290 million year old thing, check this out. Carbon dating only can go back to about 75,000 years. So there are no way that carbon dating could approach a date of 290 million years old because it can only go back so far. But there are other dating techniques that we can use on, on rock. The carbon dating is not the only one. So don't think that we're totally out of luck here because there would be other ways to do it. But carbon dating, no way. So the answer is no. No, that rock is just too old, right? I mean, the youngest one, oops. Youngest one at 290 million years at the youngest. This is not gonna not even be possible, right? You couldn't date with that with carbon dating. You'd have to use a different technique that we'll talk about um, later on, but the rock is definitely too old for that. Okay, otherwise, yeah, we, we would be able to do carbon dating if it was actually younger, we could pull it off because it contains carbon. And that's what you have to have for carbon dating. So hopefully we've answered all these questions. Let me go ahead and zoom out here a little bit. We'll just kind of roll through it. So we went ahead and So we made our little graph there. We talked about what age they came from because where they were all at. Every single fossil was found in the Devonian. So if they're all found together, that's got to be the age of the rock, right? Um, we talked about, you know, what an index fossil is. An index fossil needs to be widespread. You can find it everywhere, okay, and live a short period of time. So we can just nail in, we can just zoom right in and nail like what the time period is, like if that trilobite only lived that little segment right there and could be found around the world, bingo, good index fossil, right? Okay. Um, likely these things were in a shallow ocean because that's where limestone forms. Okay, and carbon dating, uh, it does work on carbon, so you need carbon. However, it's only gonna go back to about 75,000 years. No way are we gonna get back to 290 million years, okay? There you go. Go ahead and answer your questions on your quiz.